Hey, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you why I love Limber for After Effects character rigging and how I use it to create my character animations in After Effects. If you're familiar with character animation in After Effects, Limber is similar to some other character rigging tools like Duik or Rubberhose. If you're new to character animation, Limber is used to create these neat little lens that bend when you move around the controllers. All you have to do is animate the position of the controller layer and the rotation and movement of your limb will adjust automatically. Character rigs created this way are nice to work with because you can move your character rigs around without having to worry about how the limbs should bend and move accordingly. When you create the arms or legs with limber, you'll end up with three layers, two controllers that you use to animate your limb with and the limb layer itself. There are two things I want when creating character animations. First, I want a tool that is easy to use. I want to spend the bulk of my time finessing my animations and not building out my characters. I want the rigging process to be as simple and streamlined as possible. Second, I want something that gives me versatility. I want a character rig that has a wide range of possible animations. It's not common that you find something that is both simple to use and provides a good amount of versatility. But that's why I love Limber, because it provides both. Creating limbs in Limber is super easy. To create a new limb, you just click new and voila, you have a ready to animate limb. But what if you have a character design that you need to rig up? Well, that's where the rig and pose feature comes in handy. Let me show you a couple different ways you can use rig and pose to rig up existing artwork. The first way is to completely design the artwork from scratch. We'll start with three circles that represent the three joints of our limb. For this example, I'm going to be designing an arm, so these three circles represent the shoulder, elbow, and wrist. And I'll make sure that they're named accordingly so that I can stay organized. It's important that each of these circles, by the way, are on their own layers. Next, I'll connect these circles by designing the bicep and the forearm, both on their own layers as well. Now we have five different layers and it's time to rig everything up. I'll start by selecting the three circle layers starting from the shoulder and working my way down the limb. And then I'll select the bicep layer followed by the forearm layer. Selecting in this order is not required, but it does help you skip an extra step. With all my limb layers selected, I can hit the rig and pose button and it will pop up this little prompt. Because I selected my layers in the correct order, they will load into each of these categories correctly. If I didn't select them in the correct order, this is my chance to correct where each layer should go. Once everything looks good, I'll click OK and Limber will work its magic. Now I have a fully functional limb that includes my artwork. I really enjoy this approach to rigging character artwork because by designing everything around these circles, it ensures that my joints are always lined up correctly. In this next example, I want to show you how the rig and pose feature can actually be a huge time saver as well. So here's a common scenario I've run into as a motion designer. I've been handing some artwork from a designer that includes a character, but the character was designed in some funky pose like this. If I were using some other character rigging tool, I'd normally redesign each limb as if it were straight in order to rig it up. Then I'd go back and place it where it needs to go. But here's the tricky thing. Sometimes you have to eyeball how long the limb should be. And when designing it, I can sometimes end up with something that's a little too long or too short. Rarely am I able to just nail it exactly right. With Limber though, I can nail it exactly right. Let me show you how. This time, instead of creating three circles on separate layers, I'll select the three circle limb from the drop down menu in Limber. Then I'll use the hip and ankle controllers to position my limb and adjust the upper and lower length parameters of my limb until the middle circle, the knee, goes right where it needs to go. Then I'll adjust the width of each of these joints to match the reference. Now all I have to do is draw the thigh and the calf layers to connect my three circles using the artwork as my guide. With everything in place, I'll select my limb layer, then my thigh layer, then my calf layer, which will load everything into the right categories when I click Rig and Pose. The great thing about this is that when the limb is all rigged up, it's already in the correct position and it's ready to animate. Now I could go through the same process for the other leg, or I can simply duplicate my existing limb and reposition the new one to match the reference. 
With Rig and Pose, I can go from placing my character artwork into my composition to animation ready within five to 10 minutes. Now, the versatility of Rig and Pose doesn't stop there. In addition to creating tapered limbs, you can also use limber to create a more traditional rubber hose style limb using bones. Bones can be created by selecting them from the drop down menu here. If you want that real bendy, noodly type limb, you just need to adjust the curvature parameter in the limb settings. Another way you can create a bone limb is just by using the pen tool and drawing out your limb with three clicks. Once you've done that, you can use the path to bone button and it will convert your path into a working limb. I find that this is great for quickly creating a limb with weird proportions. Bones are also useful when you need to work fast. Limber can slow things down sometimes, especially if you got four different limbs with custom artwork. So one option is to create your limbs using bones, animate your character, and then copy and paste a limb style onto the bone after your animation is all done. Just one note though, that if you're gonna do this, make sure that the upper and lower lengths are identical on your bones and your final limb that you're gonna paste onto it, or else things won't line up correctly and you're gonna have to go back and adjust things. Also, a great use for bones is when you need a limb with sharp, squared off joints. Bones are perfect for this kind of thing because they're basically just a stroke along a path, and you can just set the stroke to miter join. And here's another kicker. I can also use this bone limb with the rig and pose feature to further customize my limb. With this suit jacket, for example, I want to add some finishing touches by adding some buttons on the cuff. So I've created a separate shape layer that contains the circles that make up my buttons. Now I'll just use the rig and pose feature just like before. And I have a rigged up bone limb with the added artwork. Now this is obviously a very simple example, but hopefully you can see the possibilities. So as you can see, there are many different intuitive ways to create your characters using limber. Now let's talk about how Limber allows for some dynamic animations. For those who are experienced character animators, you'll appreciate the way in which Limber facilitates the switch between IK and FK. If you're a beginner and you're not familiar with the terms IK and FK, these two terms refer to the ways of animating your character's limbs. With IK, which stands for inverse kinematics by the way, you use the position of a target or controller layer to animate your limb, like I talked about a little bit earlier. As you move the position of the controller, the rotation of the forearm and bicep, or calf and the thigh, depending on which limb you're animating, adjusts automatically to follow that controller layer. FK, which stands for forward kinematics, differs from IK because instead of using a controller layer to drive the motion of your limb, you are animating your limb by individually controlling the rotation of each part of your limb. IK is good for animating the things like the legs of a character when you need the feet to stick to the ground during a walk cycle. FK is good for things like the arms swinging when a character is walking or waving or kicking. However, there are certain times when you might want to switch between these two modes. Limber makes this transition super smooth. Normally, if you switch from IK to FK, your limb will just move from where you're placing it to being straight, and that can be kind of frustrating. But Limber has a match FK to IK button, and when you press that, Limber will adjust the rotation values of your limb to make sure that it is exactly where you left it when you were in IK mode. So here's a quick example of a situation where I've switched from IK to FK. In this scene, I have a character who enters the frame and then kicks the ball. The left leg is in IK mode the entire time as he walks up to the ball. Then I switch to FK as he swings back his leg and kicks the ball. For the kicking motion, it's just easier to use FK. And for the walking motion, it's just easier and much more effective to use IK. So as you can see, there are situations where you want to be able to switch between these modes and you want that switch to be flawless. Limbers FK to IK and IK to FK buttons help in that transition. So the other neat thing about switching between IK and FK is that you can actually gradually switch between them using keyframes. So actually on this animation, I have my FK set to be right here with the limb kind of reeling back. 
Those are my first keyframes. And then I have position keyframes right here where the, the foot lands. And then just by keyframing the FK on gradually, my leg will switch from where it is in IK to where it needs to be in FK. And I get this nice little motion of the leg swinging back. And then I use the keyframes on the FK to do the kicking motion. And then at the end of the kicking motion, all I have to do is basically copy these keyframes, paste them right here, and then time reverse the keyframes to have the leg go right back to where it left off when it was in IK. Another example of why I like Limber for my character animations is its ability for foreshortening. If you're unfamiliar with foreshortening, it's basically a way to describe a technique of drawing using perspective rather than just from a two-dimensional flat representation. It's kind of like the crossover event of 2D and 3D. Foreshortening is one of the things that initially attracted me to Limber. Limber not only gives you individual control over the length of each segment of your limb, it gives you control over the width of each joint. By taking advantage of all these different parameters, you can create the illusion of foreshortening for some pretty dynamic animation. This is something that no other After Effects character rigging tool can do. Okay, so as we finish up, I just wanna call out some settings that are new to Limber. You have the option to change the default icon for your controller layers. I personally have taken a liking to the Pi icon for my controller layers. It has this little tip here that indicates right where the center of the controller is visually, and it indicates the direction your joint is rotating. So you can just visually see that. You can also set the default color for the controller icons, as well as set the default label colors for the controller layers and your limb layers in your timeline. Limber does a lot to facilitate the experience that you want to have with it. So hopefully the examples I shared help to demonstrate why I love Limber and why I love using Limber. I always try to provide examples of how these tools can be used to overcome real world problems and how they can be used practically rather than just talk about their features. If you're interested in purchasing Limber for yourself, I've included a link in the description for your convenience and I believe they just dropped an update. So if you already have Limber, go download that updated version which has the expanded options in the settings I went over at the end. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you want more content like this in the future, make sure you are subscribed with that bell notification turned on. As always, if you have any questions about Limber, leave those questions in the comment section below as I'm always happy to answer them and I always try my best to get to them. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.